high demonic angel here. And I was going to talk about part two of astral projection. And I kind of got lost in my thoughts about how to best describe um, how the dead suffer on the astral plane. But I figured I would just kind of tell a story tonight instead that, that you know, kind of reminds me of, of the topic of the astral plane. So I will do part two soon, um, but for tonight I'm going to tell uh, my true experience and recent story for you guys. So I've moved a couple times recently and my partner and I got a home together and I met the woman who um, died here at this place before I even came here. So basically we were just looking for places and I hadn't been to the, the, the home that we ended up being in yet and I just I usually have vivid dreams, but this was uh, very real, like it was physically happening because I could um, see lights and, you know, smell smells and that kind of uh, vivid imagery and sensation. So bef before I ever um, set foot here, I, you know, dreamed normally pretty much except of, of how vivid it was. So, I, the dream starts off where I'm running through uh, like a forest and it's, it's like at the edge of a town. So, it's raining um, and it's just lots of um, greenery, okay, but there's this little town and maybe like a lake nearby um, or some kind of body of water and at first uh, in the dream I'm not really sure what is chasing me but I just start heading towards the town for, this, for what I perceive as the safe feeling of the town in the dream and um, as the dream goes on it becomes that feeling of what was chasing me was this first boyfriend that I ever had who was abusive to me and he was chasing me as, as like this shadow figure person and I was just, as I ran more towards the town, it rained harder, it became darker, and the panic really set in for me, and the fear, and I ran down a couple of, like, streets, and I just ran until I saw this one place, and it just kind of stood out to me. It, it was on, you know, the edge of this town where everybody was near forests and stuff and it looked like a, a little cabin home and I just saw the lights and I ran to it and this woman uh, answered the door and she was probably about 40 in my dream and she just opens the door, come on in, doesn't ask me what's going on, and I, I run inside and I lock the door behind us. And I turn around and um, there was like scented candles and stuff everywhere while she was cooking. And that was like when the, the rain, it almost kind of 
brought out a smell like that went with the wood or whatever this cabin was made of the home and it was it was really relaxing so I started to just it was really weird I don't you know usually have such sensational dreams but the smells really calmed me so I I um, start talking to her and I'm like somebody is following me don't let them in please help me and I'm just panicking like that and then she was just like don't it's okay everything's gonna be okay you're fine here and she was in this kitchen um, looking out the window like the windows over the sink and uh, she could see the forest and the edge of town and she starts looking out the window a lot and and she's got all these different mixing bowls um, you know one looks like maybe a fudge batter and another one is like soups and you know big hand, handful of um, of bowls and she starts telling me everything's gonna be okay while she starts stirring and then she'd go to the other bowl and stir some more and another bowl and stir some more and she's just, even though she's frantic in the dream and stuff, like a little, a little bit OCD, I was very calmed and I just knew I was going to be okay. And so she starts telling me, without me saying anything else, oh, it's going to be okay. This is, this is the right thing to do. There's no such thing as the right time. And she's saying all these like, deep things while she's continuing to stir through her mixing bowls and I just you know that picture in my mind popped up in the dream of me having uh, my daughter and that that there's no such thing as the right exact time or you know like the things that are in my past I've got to go forward and it's going to be okay. This is the right next step for, for me. And it's a good, it's, it's part of the life experience that, uh, that I need to taste. You know, that adulthood, motherhood, um, part of the journey. So it was very calming and then she used, you know, was looking out the window still and said, you know, boy, I sure really miss him a lot. Like, just with this longing look on her face. And you could just tell, like, she was searching for something very meaningful to her while she's still stirring her pots and running around. Kind of had her hair frizzled out. Like, she's got flour and stuff all over her apron. And she just, <laughs> a little OCD, but a very nice lady. And as I had those feelings, you know, wash over me and really calm me down, I really, you know, felt like I was safe. The dream ended and I was able to go back to uh, a dreamless sleep. And then like the next week, I, we went to the place that we would eventually get and the agent said, well, yeah, this, you know, this elderly woman passed away here not too long ago. And my partner joked and was like, oh, I wonder if she's still around. And I just said, oh, no, no, she's not. She went to go be with her husband. Uh, and he, you know, how do you know that? Well, she, when she was, then I remembered when she was looking out the window in her dream, well, she said they were going to be together forever. Like, and that to me meant she, you know, she wasn't here. And she, she isn't. Um, and of course, even though I saw the woman as middle-aged in the dream, it was just, that's part of this whole astral plane thing we've been talking about. She projected herself in, in that way to a time in her life where she was searching about how to struggle, like find the meaning in the struggle of these things. And I think that the bowls represented, you know, children that she had. 
and she was trying to make it and stir it her way. The, you know, she thought of them as her creations, which children are, but... So, you know, I just was like, there, she's gone to heaven to be with him. She missed him. And I knew she had a, a nice life. Well, the, the, the funny, I guess it funny, the funny part is, you know, our first day here, I found hundreds of nails in the walls from where, but real close together, like she was hanging up a picture and it wasn't at the quite right angle and then rather than rip the nail out of the wall, she just tacked another one right up. And this lady kept all her paperwork down to like her manual for the microwave. And so it just was like, made me laugh. Like she was so OCD in the dream and here was evidence of that's how the way that she actually was. And it's, it's still sometimes, you know, is uncanny or yeah, I feel that real sense of synchronicity. And, um, and it, it's really a, a special thing to me. So I kind of shared it even, even though it probably seemed more special to me than it sounded to you guys. That's generally how I experience, like, the astral plane now. No, I mean, obviously not all of it's pleasant, but it's, it's really, it really feels nice to have a real, like, connection, and then there's that piece of reality that matches up with it, and, and it just makes me feel, like, more drawn, of course, to practicing the occult and everything because I feel like I can form connections with people who have crossed over in a sense. But I don't think that, you know, she wasn't a real ghost uh, uh, haunting this place. She went to the cosmic plane. And basically what I experienced was because she was recently deceased, her, some of her thoughts and, you know, this con connection to property that was about to happen. And, it, and I experienced that dream, I believe, more for my own benefit. Like, in a sense, what I'm saying is I think my mind produced that dream for me to try to um, come to terms with things and process information and the, the function of dreams. But, it, you know, it really works. Like, yeah, de definitely. And I, I had a connection with, you know, what was left of some of her thoughts. And I, I was able to experience part of, her, part of her personality before I ever set foot here. And before I ever knew, and uh, I guess my one last side note to this story is, later we were looking up her name for some uh, re reasons related to the house, and my partner looked her up, like, online, and he found her Find a Grave, which is a great website. I spend too much time on that. <laughs> but. She, on her headstone, buried next to her husband, who died a long time before she did. It says, together forever. And that's what she said to me in the dream when she was looking out the window. And then the other thing was her husband had, they lived on the, the northwest coast of the U.S. So that's very foresty and at the time he passed away, that's where they were living, and they brought him out to the southwest. <clears throat> and, you know, now they're buried together. So, you know, that was just another real piece of it. It's, it's just like in that moment in the dream, I didn't think about how significant that. But it stood out to me, because it wasn't a long conversation with her. It's, it's you know, thoughts and 
telepathy and stuff like that in dreams. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's little personal story video. Um, please consider donating to me on Patreon. I am a, a struggling new mom and I would love to be able to get better equipment and be able to really dedicate more time to the occult. So go to the links on my Patreon, and I just created a Twitter account for Demonic Angel, so I'm pretty so stoked about that. And thank you guys so much. Uh, have a good night.